At the Missouri Orthopedic Institute, we're developing the next generation of treatments to improve the way you move. Not only does the Institute provide a full range of care inside, but our physicians are working with leading scientists outside across the University of Missouri campus to develop new technologies that go beyond restoring health. Today, arthritis patients receiving metal and plastic joints do very well, and their quality of life is improved, but they are still limited to their level of activity and by the life of the joint replacement. At the Missouri Orthopedic Institute, we are developing a new preservation technique to extend the shelf life of those joints. This new technology will offer a large group of patients better options in the future to help them live a more active life. Hi, I'm Jim Stannard. I'm the chairman of the Department of Orthopedics and I work in trauma and sports medicine and have been involved doing some really fascinating research with Dr. Jimmy Cook and the folks over at the Comparative Orthopedics Lab developing new ways to treat joint injuries and injuries to the articular cartilage. And they act very much like a pothole does in a road. We've developed some techniques that are making it to where people can do uh, more and more after these injuries with some of the treatment techniques we have to patch those potholes and fill them. Our new joint replacement strategy is really the holy grail of arthritis treatment. As Dr. Standard said, we're working with a whole new kind of patches for the potholes in the road of your joints. A patient suffering from arthritis or other joint disorders could potentially be a candidate for metal and plastic joint replacements. While metal and plastic joint replacement is an effective surgery, it's a repair strategy. We're interested in regeneration. With our new preservation technique, we can actually put new cartilage in your joint that can respond to daily activities and actually renew itself and allow you to do the activities that you want to do. It's like a fountain of youth for your joints. With the old method, we don't know when we're at day 26 or 27 or 28 if we have enough live cells or if we don't because at 28 days the average has 70 percent of the cells alive but some of those have 65 and some have 75 or 80. Dr. Cook has developed a technique where we think we can preserve them for 70, 80, maybe even 90 days. Instead of putting in a graft that's 26 or 7 days old and has 72 percent of the cells alive when the threshold for failure is 70, I may put one in you that's 45 days old but has 95% of the cells alive and is way, way, way more likely to succeed. This time period makes the grafts more usable and of higher quality. That difference is huge. Right now only 20% of donated graft material gets used. With our technique, we will increase that significantly, which is a benefit to everyone. So one great example of this is Buddy. He's a dog from southern Missouri, and unfortunately he was injured in a field trial and had four other surgeries elsewhere before he came to us at Mizzou. Mr. Haley, his owner, was really at his last resort in terms of trying to help Buddy out. With our regenerative strategy, we were able to replace his joint, not only return him to a comfortable lifestyle, but get him back to winning field trials. We're getting more and more people as our population ages that are not wanting to settle down to a sedentary lifestyle. This technology provides an alternative where you don't have to be told, I'm sorry, you're worn out and you're going to have to have a total joint and you got to stop doing these things you love. And I think this technology is changing the game where we can do that. Uh, and who knows where the upper age limit is. I, I hope to test that. The next step would be to actually build our own joints. And we're so close. In the lab, we can create a customized joint for each individual patient. What's really, really exciting is the, the three-dimensional printing and the ability to grow a new distal femur or proximal tibia or joint. We're working right now on a solution using 3D printing that can actually create a scaffold, a model if you will, to put human cells on. Then, with our bioreactor mechanism, we can turn those cells into real cartilage, which could then become an implant that's designed for the specific patient. We can grow the cartilage in the lab, and we can exercise it. We can make it walk, run, do push-ups, lift weights, and all the other activities that you would do for your real joint. Then we can implant it just like the metal and plastic, but in this situation, it's regeneration instead of repair. The Mizzou advantage and the Mizzou spirit that exists, we are one of only a handful of campuses in the country that have a med school and a vet school and an engineering school all on the same campus and quite frankly within an easy walk from one another. That totally changes the ability to collaborate. The thing I really love about this partnership is its uniqueness. This is really happening nowhere else in the world except at Mizzou. Every single day, scientists in the lab work together with clinicians in a teamwork approach for the benefit of the patient. 
At Mizzou, we really do everything as a team to make life better for our patients. You don't have to be an elite athlete to learn how to move better. At the Missouri Orthopedic Institute, we're using some of the latest motion capture technology to help us pinpoint our patients' exact needs. By capturing hundreds of details with this new DARI system, our therapists can design a custom treatment plan to get you back on your feet faster, or just back into what you enjoy doing the most. At the Missouri Orthopedic Institute, we found a whole new way to track how you move and help you move better. We've taken some of the special effects technology used in Hollywood and now we're using that same type of precision to help our patients with a new motion capture analysis system called the DARI. Named after the company that designed it, our DARI motion capture analysis system is the first system of its kind to be used in a clinical setting in the world. Motion capture systems are nothing new in the physical therapy and rehabilitation world. They've been around forever, but the problem is they're fairly labor intensive. They require the patient to wear a special suit and the therapist to painstakingly place markers accurately on each joint. With our current system, we can run 10 to 15 patients through the system in an hour. The old systems where markers are used, we could only do about one per hour. By capturing real-time data, the DARI gives us a more precise diagnosis of your problems and it does this very quickly because we're not using the traditional techniques. In a few short minutes, we can capture hundreds of details about how one person moves. Anything you can do in a 20 by 24 foot space, we can track and the system creates a skeletal model of your body and how your body is moving. The DARI uses 14 different infrared cameras to capture your body in motion and provide data on how you are moving in 3D. The system tracks and produces a picture of how joints and segments are moving throughout the body. If a patient comes to us and performs even a simple movement like a standing squat, the DARI gives us a host of data about that movement, such as showing range of motion and joint reaction forces. Through various mathematical calculations, the DARI can map out where the joints and bones are inside of your body, and that's how it's able to capture how your joints and your body segments are moving. Through this, we can look at symmetry, movement restrictions, and functional imbalances. Armed with this new information, the therapist can then design a completely customized treatment plan to correct these problem areas. One of the things we plan to do with the athletes is functional baseline testing at the beginning of each season. With that baseline information, we will be able to better detect potential breakdowns in function. We can also use this baseline testing to help us in the event of an injury to help determine return to play. But it's not just about getting back on the field, it's about getting back into life and the activities our patients enjoy. Whether it's from a range of motion standpoint to becoming stronger or just functioning better, this system helps us gather the information we need to pinpoint and treat our patients' problems. And we're the only clinical setting in the world to be able to do this for our patients. As patients age, they can develop osteoporosis and other conditions that soften bones. At the Missouri Orthopedic Institute, we're leading the way to develop a whole new type of construction material for your bones. Called bioactive cement, it's made from some of the same molecules that make up human bones, and it has the potential to hold stronger and last longer than other materials. At the Missouri Orthopedic Institute, we're discovering the very best way to help people with spinal injuries. Just as you would anchor a screw to a stud in a wall, today, one of the most common methods in spinal surgery involves attaching metal rods to the spine using screws into the bone. It's called internal fixation and it's been a major advancement in spine surgery over the last 20 years or so. But the problem is many patients who need to have those procedures are aging now and getting osteoporosis. What happens is the screws and the rods that were once attached to the bone are now becoming loose because they were anchored into softened bone and they no longer hold in place. We've been working on ways to improve the outcomes for patients with osteoporosis. That's where bioactive cement comes in. It's made from some of the same molecules that make up human bone, and we found that this type of cement holds great potential. The cements currently in use are inert. Sometimes, those inert cements can loosen in the body over time. But it turns out that if we coat screws with certain bioactive substances, you can make the screws more secure. The bioactive material cements so your own bone cells can tunnel into it. The process essentially turns the cement into your own bone over time. We're studying how the body responds to these bioactive cements and the techniques used over longer periods of time. 
Our team has a computer model that we've created that replicates the same scenario that makes these screws fail in the same way we see them fail in human patients. For example, if a screw starts getting stressed in an osteoporotic bone, we've learned it toggles in its hole and then starts to pull out. But if we cement the hole before putting the screw in, we've learned there is a much better chance for success. We have patients that are getting older and want to continue to have a high function and quality in their lives. We don't want to tell them, I'm sorry, you have an osteoporotic spine and we can't fix that. That's not acceptable. We want them to be out having an active quality of life. This new technique could benefit anyone who has soft bones and needs surgery to stabilize a part of their spine. One of the things that drew me here was the collaborative power that our campus holds. With the College of Engineering and the Veterinary School right here, I can go into the operating room in the morning and in the afternoon collaborate with these different experts across campus. We at Mizzou are at the nexus of discovery and together we can move the field forward.